love your work. On this show, we help you make it as a creative entrepreneur, find your unique voice, find the right mindset to succeed, be the first to capitalize on new opportunities to make a living making your art. I'm David Cadavy. If you want to join us here on Love Your Work every Thursday, please hit subscribe on your podcast app and get your free creative productivity toolkit. Sign up at cadavy.net slash tools. To optimize your creative output, you need a creative productivity system. And if you can identify the building blocks of your daily creative work, you can construct a system that works for you. And one of those building blocks is what I call task transitions. Task transitions are those little spaces between finishing one task and starting another task. Each transition is a critical moment. It's when you decide whether you're going to keep moving, whether you're going to take an intentional break, or whether you're simply going to fall off the tracks. I'm going to tell you more in this week's episode. Thank you to our newest Patreon supporters, Coley Dodd and Chris Spagnolo. And recently I told you we were aiming to reach the goal of $490 a month, that at that point, we could start having detailed show notes, showing the links for each article or book or other thing mentioned in the interviews. Well, I expected that to take a while, but we busted straight through that goal. So thank you so much to everybody supporting on Patreon. We will start having more detailed show notes with next week's interview episode. I also got a surprise contribution through PayPal from Leanne Hilbrich. Leanne contributed $150 just out of the blue. I got $150 in my inbox. That was nice. Why? Leanne says, David, thank you for your podcast episode, 24 Things I Learned Publishing Three Books in Only Six Months. That episode gave me the information and the courage to finally get one of my books out there. And I'm thrilled that Rooted in Love, a 40-day practice of growing self-compassion in your life and planting seeds of compassion in the world, is now out on Kindle and in paperback. Instead of buying you a coffee, I wanted to buy you a nice meal. Congratulations, Leanne, on the release of your new book. I'm really thrilled that you feel that I had some small part in it. Of course, it was all up to you. I appreciate the nice meal. Thank you so much. If you, listener, would like to buy me a cup of coffee or a nice meal, visit patreon.com slash cadavy, or you can find the link to the show notes. And I recently took a trip to San Francisco to be on the Jordan Harbinger show, which is a big deal. It should come out sometime toward the end of March, I'm told. And I think that you're really going to enjoy what I've prepared for that show. And I also met up with some listeners. So thank you so much to everybody who came out. It was fantastic meeting all of you and hanging out and chatting about all sorts of things. So hopefully if you missed that or you live in some other place other than San Francisco, we will get a different opportunity to meet up in person. It's an honor to have the University of California, Irvine's Division of Continuing Education sponsoring the show. They have a ton of certificate programs and specialized studies programs available. You can do it on your own time and advance your career in as little as six months. Spring quarter is coming up. Registration's open. Visit ce.uci.edu slash podcast and enter the promo code podcast. Get 15% off one course. That's ce.uci.edu slash podcast. Enter the word podcast for 15% off one course. This offer is valid through March 31st. If you are dreaming about making it as a creative entrepreneur, but you struggle to find the motivation, I have an opportunity for you to learn from me and to break out of unproductive cycles, tap into your personal motivational fuel. I have spent 12 years getting to where I am today, and I'm going to be sharing everything that I've learned about staying self-motivated to be a productive and successful solopreneur in my upcoming webinar, Self-Motivation for Solopreneurs. It is on March 20th. It is free. It is a live webinar. You can ask me questions in real time. Learn the details and sign up at cadavy.net slash motivation. That is cadavy.net slash motivation. Here's the episode. Task transitions can make or break your productive flow. When you're transitioning from one task to another, you're at risk of falling off the tracks. If you understand the factors at play, you can design task transitions that will keep you productive and focused. I first noticed the importance of task transitions when I changed a writing habit. I had a writing habit of a 500-word article each morning, and then I changed that habit to write a 100-word article each morning. 
Counterintuitively, I found it much harder to transition to a new task after finishing my 100-word article than I did after finishing my 500-word article. How could I design my tasks and the transitions between those tasks to keep my work sessions productive? I set out to understand task transitions. Here are some of the mechanisms that determine how well a task transition will perform. One, how well-defined is the task to which you are transitioning? Two, what level of self-discipline do you have in this moment? Three, how much momentum do you have? Four, to what degree do the activities you perform when transitioning distract you? Let's examine those factors one by one. One, how well-defined is the task to which you are transitioning? If I just finished writing an article and I'm looking for what to do next, is that next task well-defined? If I already have a task defined on a to-do list, the work is well-defined. If I'm just leaving it up to how I feel to decide what to do next, the work is poorly defined. When you have to define a task during your transition, you have to switch mental states. I have found there to be seven mental states to creative productivity. If I finish a task, for example, writing an article, and then have to figure out what to do next, I have to switch from a generate mental state to a prioritize mental state. Switching mental states at all takes up some mental energy, so it puts you at risk of losing focus before you can get into your next task. The prioritize mental state is the most mentally taxing mental state of them all, so merely deciding what to do next carries additional mental costs. The more mental energy you expend transitioning to your next task, the harder time you'll have getting started on that next task. Two, what level of self-discipline do you have in this moment? Your ability to transition to a new task will depend upon your level of self-discipline in the moment. In some ways, self-discipline is a myth. I'm defining it here as simply having enough mental energy to suppress what urges you might have to do something else. When I finished my 100-word habit, my self-discipline wasn't strong when it came time to transition to my next task. I had eroded my self-discipline by conditioning myself to expect a reward. This is where, if you're not careful, B.J. Fogg's tiny habit principles can backfire. When you perform a habit, it's a good idea to celebrate. Celebrating in some way helps you associate that habit with a good feeling. That increases the chances you'll perform the habit the next day. If I had started with a 100-word habit, maybe I would have found a better way to transition to a new task. I could have transitioned to an hour of work on a front-burner creative project, for example. But I switched to a 100-word habit after several months of having a 500-word habit, so I had conditioned myself to behave differently. My mind had this scheme of behavior programmed into it. Perform writing habit. Then get reward. Then do next thing. This worked out fine at 500 words. I needed a break after such a long task anyway. But at 100 words, the reward reduced my self-discipline. This was exacerbated by the fact that I had conditioned myself to expect the kind of reward I would get from writing 500 words when I was, in fact, only writing 100 words. Three, how much momentum do you have? You'll have an easier time moving on to the next task if you have momentum. When I spent an hour and a half writing 500 words, I built up momentum. I got into the writing groove, and I had even practiced suppressing urges throughout my writing session. But when I spent 10 minutes writing 100 words, I didn't build up momentum. I hadn't gotten into the groove, and I hadn't practiced much urge suppression. Notice that there's a big difference between my 10-minute hack, wherein I would set a timer for 10 minutes to get started writing, and my 100-word article habit. The difference between these two 10-minute exercises lies in momentum. If I'm writing a 100-word article, by the time I'm done, I don't have much momentum. The completion of the article has countered my momentum with an expectation of reward. But when I'm doing a 10-minute hack, my aim is to build momentum toward writing for a longer period of time. Task completion lies much further ahead, so completion bias doesn't stunt my momentum. Fourth, to what degree do the activities you perform when transitioning distract you? What you choose to do between one task and the next task will affect how well you transition to that next task. When I was writing a 500-word article each morning, it was fine if I checked Twitter for a second afterward. 
I had enough momentum going that I wanted to get back to work and do my next task. More than I wanted to spend a lot of time on social media, that is. But when I finished a 100-word article, checking Twitter would then spiral into checking Facebook, checking podcast download stats, and worst of all, checking email. My break would take me completely off the rails, sometimes ruining the most productive hours of my day. Getting my day off to a bad start would sometimes affect the entire rest of my day. The break activities you choose need to be matched with how well-defined your next task is, the level of self-discipline you have in the moment, and the amount of momentum that you have. If all of these factors are high, a social media break might be okay. If they are low, checking social media puts the rest of your day at risk. The next time you complete a task and transition to the next, notice these factors at work. Is it clear what to do next? How have your previous activities affected your willpower? Do you have momentum you can put toward the next task? What are you doing between the two tasks? And how does that activity affect your ability to transition to the next task? If you think deliberately about task transitions and design your tasks and the spaces between them to make those transitions smooth, you'll be well on your way to a state of perpetual creative productivity. Is Love Your Work helping you find your unique creative voice? Does it bring you the inspiration and motivation you need to become the creator and human you want to be? If so, please be a part of making this a special and nourishing and thoughtful show. Support the show on Patreon. You'll be an even bigger part of this show than you already are. If you contribute just a coffee a month, you'll be helping support the hosting and production of Love Your Work. Everyone has some unique creative gift to offer the world. Together, we can give people the tools they need to bring that work into the world. The world will be better off for it. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash academy. This is a different kind of model for supporting the work that you love. The choice is yours. Vote with your dollars, put your money where your mind is, and keep love your work going. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash academy. As a thank you, you'll get early access, bonus content, and a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at patreon.com slash cadavy. That's patreon.com slash K-A, D as in David, A, V as in Victor, Y. And if you can't support the show financially and you've listened to at least three episodes, can you do me a favor? Write a review on Apple Podcasts. You can consider it your donation to help support the show. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by our Patreon supporters, such as mini sponsors Roxana Maynard of Agility Alchemist, at agilityalchemist.com and Paula Spriggs, and top supporters such as Jeffrey Mason and Vitas Pinkovichis. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. The theme music for this show is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc.